All right, I gotta make this a quick video, no time at all. Um, anyway, uh, so, well, uh, yeah, this Mike Bayou guy, um, made a couple of videos, and one on this horizontal, vertical kind of way of thinking, which is sort of interesting, but I'm gonna just say that I think the patterns that we acquire sometimes are good patterns, and sometimes diverging from those patterns won't do good logic. So, over time, if you, um, you can become kind of refined in how you think about things. And stirring it up for no good reason sometimes isn't going to get you anywhere. It will sort of be a waste of your time because you're not being methodical. Um, but, I mean, kind of obviously, it's always, you know, like in art, there's a phrase, you know, make it and then break it. Because, you know, you want to just keep on building it, you know, making it cleaner and cleaner. And so sort of this, you know, as you're trying to get from here to there, you know, it might help sometimes to, you know, look for a shortcut. Um, you know, w wiggle the, take, take some other forks. And so, yeah, that's all sensible, I suppose. Um, in terms of finding a new route or some new way to get there. And, and like, we never have any direct routes now to, from, from fact A to fact C. It's always kind of convoluted just because we haven't really organized logic and established premise facts and all of this other stuff. So obviously you have to do some some out-of-the-box thinking in the sense that you can't be too sure of any position because there are so many positions that are accepted. And so that's got to mean something to you. So you do have to try out some of these other positions to see. But anyway... That's all i got to say about this. So this is the video we posted on this moral relativism stuff, crap shit. Um, this Paul, whatever, uh, Bugosi guy, both Bugosian. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, just annoying. So yeah, I'll play this and just critique it, because it's just an annoying misparaphrase of what moral absolutists might say. It seems to me Kant was crazy to think that there would be no circumstances under which it would be correct. The question then becomes, well, how do we tell the difference between an absolutist and a relativist, given that there's dependence on something that's embraced by both? And I think the crucial distinction is that the relativist thinks that moral verdicts depend on what the agent's or the community's moral code is, whereas what the absolutist is claiming, there is a single true moral code, we just have to figure out exactly which qualifications it enters on which particular moral verdicts. Right, so, um, <clears throat> you know, I mean, the, 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 this, this very idea that there is such a thing as an established community standard, that that somehow means something or should mean anything to anybody, that's like just saying because people believe it, it's the truth. I mean, that would be idiotic. You're judging the morality, then I suppose the point is, is to judge it cleanly, not judge it based on how popular it is. I mean, isn't that all you're just saying? Is that the argument from popularity or the argument because he believes it, it's got to be true for him? And that somehow if it's true for him, it's true for the universe? Well, that's just nonsense. So where does that go? That goes absolutely nowhere as a logical function. That's just premised on an idiotic notion of human unreliability. I mean, if humans were reliable testifiers to the truth, that might mean something, but it means nothing in an atmosphere where no community has established itself as being always right. So, fuck that. Decide between those two options. Well, one of the things that I'm inclined to think is that the idea that a moral truth can depend on a background moral code is incoherent when you really get down to what it means. Well, a background moral code, again, so no, it's a background qual quantity, a, 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 a quanta, or um, I can't remember what another word for it, uh, a kernel, right, a kernel of value. So you establish what the kernel is, what the thing is made out of, and then you do your math on top of that kernel. So, yeah, establish what the kernel is, the not the base morality, but the kernel of value, and then establish your morality based on mere efficiency equations. And there are two, at least two, main considerations that drive this. One of them is that when you ask yourself, look, what kind of a judgment is it to say, not this is wrong, but this is wrong relative to my moral code, it looks as though the judgment that relativizes 
the relevance of the rightness of an act to a background moral code is just a descriptive remark and not a normative remark of any kind. So it would be... Well, that's just crazy. Again, it's not just it's some prescriptive. It's prescriptive based on some sort of, or descriptive based on, a, um, you have to have some sort of reason. If you just show up and say, I think it's wrong because I think so, well, yeah, that's completely ignorable. But if you say, I think it's wrong because this is what I believe the kernel of value to be, if I don't see any disputable fact on this kernel, so until you can establish the kernel is not true or not reasonable, that's my standard, that seems quite obvious, and I don't hear anything rational opposing it except for some notion of a god or some other kind of bullshit, so fuck all that crap. So, no problem still. So, bullshit on that first reason. As though, in the case of motion, we haven't succeeded in defining something that is the relativistic cousin of absolute motion, but simply gotten rid of the notion altogether. Yeah, well, that's your, that's your claim, okay? So, that's just bullshit. So, yeah, you're just talking about them saying they don't know anything, and you didn't even give them a test. So that's just bullshit. I can give you a statement saying that the kernel of value is uh, sentient welfare, and um, yeah, that's what everything's built on. All morality is based on whether you make things comfortable or uncomfortable. If you harm things, then you gotta that's the, the negative. And if you unharm them or make them feel better, relieve them of some kind of harm, well, that's a good. And the rest of it's all crap. When we know this is that if you take an example of a relativized judgment of that kind, for instance, eating beef is permissible relative to the code of the the West, anyone, no matter what their normative convictions are, can agree with that, because it's just a logical remark about the relation between the code and what it delivers. So even a Hindu who disagreed that eating beef is permissible would agree that relative to the code of the West, it is permissible. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, relative to the law. So, I mean, what's the point of having a discussion about what the, the nature of morality is and when you're just going to sit there and talk about what has been established as law or what has been established as habit? That's not the fucking issue. That's not the subject. I mean, what, that certainly wouldn't have any relation to what a, a, a moral absolutist is going to argue. A moral absolutist is going to argue with this is the absolute reason why that isn't right or that is right. But it's not going to sit there and say it's right because they think so. That's complete crap. I mean, what you're saying is that when somebody says, look, this is a relative moral judgment, it's relative to my culture, from another perspective, that's just a sociological fact. It's no longer moral at all. It's just purely describing the beliefs that they happen to hold relative to other beliefs that are common in that culture. There's no moral element left there is dissolved. That's the claim, although people have this feeling that they're somehow occupying some midway position where they've retained some use of moral vocabulary but are somehow relativizing it to their background convictions. Really what they've done is bleached it of all moral or normative content. And the way we can see this is by seeing that somebody else who intuitively holds a very different normative position is completely able to agree with these relativized moral judgments. Yeah, now, yeah, whatever. How could that be? Intuitively, if, come on, this is just such crap. You, you're going to have a conversation about what intuitive, what people are intuiting about the truth? Well, it's just, it's just crap. That's how you invent gods. That's how you invent lies. That's how you just invent fraud. Of course, people would like to intuitively think they're okay, that they're not crossing the line, that it's okay this one time. I only did it once. I only did it a little bit. Yeah, the rationalizations come out of the fucking woodwork. So this is just bullshit. If you can't base it on something more solid than that, then you wouldn't be an absolutist. So again, you're just, you're just, you're just making an argument between mush people and mush people. All right, talk to a real absolutist and get a real argument. You know, instead of this playing this game like they don't have an argument. Yeah, they have an argument. I have an argument. So fuck you. I don't like this guy. It's okay. You post the video. I just I don't like it. This is bullshit. It's a bullshit conversation. Should have put bullshit conversation in the title. It's a bullshit conversation. They're not talking about anything. They're not saying anything. Sheesh, mush. Anyway, till next time.